Let's be real, making games takes ages, and for beginners, the longest process can be the technical side of game dev. So in this video, I'm going to give you 7 practical tips for speeding up your game development process. For this video though, I'm focusing on Unity and Visual Studio. Unity is our game engine that we're using, and Visual Studio is our IDE, where we write the code. So have you ever wanted to create, let's say, I don't know, 3 or 4 scripts at a time? So what you would normally do is you would right click, you'd go to create, you'd select a C sharp script, you'd name it something nice like controller, and you press enter, and Unity has to recompile. Now, see if you're running a very large project, this can take ages, there we go, the recompile started. Now, and this is quite a small project, so it's very fast, but by the time you've developed a significant chunk of your game, this can take a long time. So instead of doing that, we can just delete that controller and come into our solution in Visual Studio. And a much quicker way of doing this is just to open the Solution Explorer on the right. And if you can't see that, just go to View and then go to Solution Explorer and it'll open up. Right click on the folder that you want it to go in, press New Item under under Add, just call it whatever you want, Control.cs. You see a wee difference here, the only thing that we're missing here is the script, the mono behaviour and the start and the update. But see once you've done this once or twice, You'll remember it dead easy. And that is how our typical Unity class would be created and start up as anyway. But we've made it through the controllers and if you're running a very small project, like I said, this isn't going to make too much of a difference. But if you're at that stage where it's a larger project, then you're going to see the slowdown because every time you create a new file in the Unity Inspector or the Unity um, Project window, Unity recompiles like that every single time. Right, tip number two. Now let's imagine for a second, oh no. Oh, I've spelt attacking wrong. I've spelt attacking. Well, it's not a problem, because what I'm going to show you will make it so that instead of having to rename this every single time I've used it in my project, right click it, go to rename, put in the name you want. So I'm going to take that F away and put a G in, press enter, and every single time that has been used, they're all going to be rename, renamed all in the one. So if I look at every time I've used it here, it's only been used three times, so that's not a big issue. But I've been in projects where certain variables have been used hundreds of times, and there is no way I'm going through every reference and renaming them all. And you can always do a control F, find and replace, but I'm not a big fan of that because it means you're looking for the text rather than the actual reference. So just right click, rename, and call it whatever you want. And I should have mentioned, this works for anything. You can do this for a class, so I can rename player, to anything I want. It also works for methods. Tip number three is link queries. Now I remember when I first started learning my very first programming language, using loops was like some sort of magic trick, okay? The truth is, when I look at a lot of old code now, there's a ton of instances where I'm using a for or a for each loop, but it could easily be replaced by a link query. And what is link? Link is a set of data queries that you can use on arrays or lists, etc. to order, group, or filter data. So why don't we have a look at some examples? So let's have a look at some link queries here, okay? So first one we'll look at is a for each. So this is prior to the link query. The for each loop is we are creating a new list of enemy objects, and then we're looping through all the game objects in the scene that we can find. We're finding out if they've got a tag of enemy, and if they do, we add them into the enemy objects list. How can we replace this? Make it much more simpler and less likely to have errors. Let's have a look. This is your link query. So what we're doing here is we're using again find objects of type game object. Then we use where. So where creates a new list where the argument is correct here, is true. So we're setting OBJ is essentially what OBJ is here. And then we're comparing the OBJ tag to enemy, just like we're doing here. And then at the end of that, we're converting the where, which is an I enumerable, we're con con converting, sorry, that to a list. So it's much more simple, much more straightforward once you get used to it. Can take a wee bit of getting used to, but let's have another look at an example. And I guarantee we've all done this at some point when we've been calculating scores or something like that. So we create a new total score, we make it zero to begin with, we loop through all the players, and then we add to the total score the score associated with that player. We might have done this with, I don't know, health or damage or something along those lines in the past. Let's replace it with a link query. So we instantiate the total score, we set it to a list of players or a collection of players, then we use sum, the player is the selector 
and we select the score associated with the player and that will return the exact same that we've done here but all in the one line. Tip number four is find all references. Now you might have had this one spoiled for you, you might have seen me using this earlier but you're familiar with a control F search right? So let's say you want to find every time we're calling set text so we would do control F, we would type in set text we would set this to, I don't know, entire solution, or maybe current project, or current document, let's go current project, and then we would do find all, and then we would see them down here. Now what if I told you there was a method for doing that that's a wee bit less shite, and we always like a wee bit less shite, instead of doing that, get rid of that, find this, right click, find all references, and it does the same thing, and you're not relying on not having certain spelling mistakes, or having two methods or variables that are spelt very similarly, you're just finding this reference. And again, this is a method. However, I could do it for a variable, such as my attacking one. I could do it for a class, such as my player class. Nice and easy. Now, just before I go into tip number five, don't worry, this isn't an advert break. I'm no very advertiser friendly for that. But I'd just like to ask, if you're enjoying this video so far, if you just give it a wee like, that really helps me out big time. And if you've discovered any wee cheeky productivity hacks for Unity, why don't you let me know by dropping a wee comment. Now tip number five is breakpoints, and I have got another video which talks about this, which you might find useful. But imagine you find a error in your Unity console, so you double click it to find the line. That takes us into your code, but you're still not exactly sure what's causing this error. So by looking at this line here, I don't know exactly what this error is. Simply, what we're going to do is we're going to click here on the wee grey bit down the left hand side. And if you can't find that, you can just go to the line, come up the top to debug, and then you can click new breakpoint function breakpoint. Okay, now what this means is, and you'll see it's active by the red highlight, what this means is every time this line goes to get executed by the game, instead of executing it, it will first pause. So what you want to do is add your breakpoint, and come up the top, and I'll stop this just now to show you, click attach to Unity. That just basically links Unity and Visual Studio together to ensure this works. Now what you'll see is, I'm going to clear the console, press play, and we can see here we've been brought in automatically, and our game has paused because we're on this breakpoint. Now I can have a wee look through here and find out what was my error. So my error was a null reference is what it was complaining about. So can I see any null references? Yes, I can. So all I'm doing is hovering over these values here. So I now know that I'm trying to reference the team manager instance, but that's null, and I'm not handling whether that's null or not. So if I then come into team manager, and you can see here I've been a bit of a bampot, and I have commented out the assignment of that instance value. So in this case, I set that up to fail. I know I'm cheeky. I'm a cheeky boy, right? I set that up to fail, but it was just to show you how you can use these breakpoints in order to discover the root of errors in your code. And there's another very useful scenario that you might find yourself in where breakpoints will help you out. Let's say you've been brought on to work as part of a team on a new project that's already had a significant amount of work done to it, or maybe you buy a bit of code from the Unity Asset Store and you're trying to figure out what somebody else's code does. Well, simply what you can do is set a breakpoint at the start of the game or set a breakpoint when something happens that you're trying to work out and then when you pause it you can just come up the top here find the wee arrow that says step over or you can use f10 and you can just step through the code as much as you want you can just keep going and you can see what every single line is doing and then if you want to stop and figure out certain things like how many players have i got in this list zero i can keep going so on and so forth now if you can't see this attached to unity button up the top which some of you might not be able to see Let's get that fixed. Now, what you want to do is find your Visual Studio installer. And when you come in here, you want to modify whatever Visual Studio version you're using. So for me, it's 2022, so let's click on Modify. And we want to make sure that we've got the game development with Unity tools installed and enabled. And you'll be able to tell with that wee tick. Now, if it's not, just tick the box and click the Install button down the bottom. That should sort it for you. However, if it does not, next thing that you want to do is come into Edit then preferences and then external tools and make sure your external script editor is set to whatever version of Visual Studio that you're using. Tip number six is go to definition. Now if you've ever watched one of my tutorials before you'll have seen me doing this all the time man it's super helpful. So this quickly lets you navigate around a project 
and you can go to the declaration of a variable, method or a class simply by clicking on it. So the example I'm going to use here is this method, get team. Now instead of finding the team manager script somewhere in here, what I need to do is right click and go, go to definition. That opens up the file and it takes me right to that method. I can do that for anything, I can do it for a variable, I can do it for a class, anything. And I'll even do you one better here, here's a wee Brucey bonus. Come back to here and before I did, go to definition, say you don't want to go to that file, you just want to have a wee quick look to see what it's doing, click peak definition. That will open up a wee window here right underneath where you clicked and you can see exactly what that script's doing, and that bit of code even is doing. And I can go, alright, okay, so it's using first a default through link, that's fine. I'll just close that. Tip number seven is the watch list. So this is another debugging tool in Visual Studio that will help you monitor values in real time while your code is paused. So if you get certain values that you want to track, this is an easy way to watch their values over time. So for this example, let's say we've got an RPG, right? We want to cast a spell which will damage the enemy's health, but it will also reduce our mana. So we can set a watch list up for each value, but first, we need to be debugging. So let's, let's attach it to Unity like we've done previously. So click attach to Unity. Then we're going to want to pause the game. So I'm just going to call it and start, okay? So I'll come back into my game. I'll close it. I'll press play. And then I'll hit this breakpoint and start. So that's what we want. So in order to add a watch to one of our variables, we just right click it. So I'm going to want to watch the enemy HP and the mana. So right click enemy HP and add watch mana. Right click add watch and you'll get this wee window opening up and we can see here the name of the value so enemy hp and mana the current value and what type it is so in start here we're going to come to cast a spell so i'm just going to press continue to go to the next break point so we're in cast a spell so what i do here is i reduce the enemy hp by the spell damage i reduce the mana by the spell cost i check if we can cast it again so if the enemy has still got hp and i've still got enough mana to cast another spell then we cast it again. So instead of hovering each time over these values and checking what they are, I've got these watch, um, I've got this watch list down here. So I'll just press continue and I'll step through. And I'll just step through each time. So you can see here that it's 44, 46. If it's red, that means it's been altered from its default state. So I'm just stepping through and I can see those values. This is a very, very simple example. But you imagine if you've got a quite a complex game with tons of values and maybe there's a bit of a discrepancy between what you're expecting to happen and what's actually happening. You can easily chuck all those values in here, monitor what they are and find out where the mistake is happening. Right guys, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed seeing my big tips today. If you did, just give us a wee like, I would really appreciate that. And if you feel like it, give me a wee cheeky subscribe. See you in the next video folks, cheers.